In this video, we shall discourse of graphics cards and their uses for stable diffusion. I have always been fascinated by graphics cards and their mysterious powers. They are like magic boxes that can transform the images on the screen into something alive, something real. The combination of different graphics cards and stable diffusion, this is magic. This technique enables us to produce lifelike images which are of great utility in the fields of computer graphics. Stable diffusion is employed in various arts and sciences but it demands a graphics card of great power and skill which can perform the complex calculations and rendering necessary. Having said this, I shall compare several graphics cards of different brands and qualities and judge their speed, their excellence and their price and also how big and, and hot they run. We start off by considering memory. Now there are three architectures of memory to consider. One is unified memory, which is found in Apple devices. The second is shared memory. If you have a Windows PC with a graphics card, discrete graphics card, you are probably using shared memory. And then there is the discrete graphics card memory. This is memory that you find when you buy the graphics card on the box, you're going to have a memory score. That memory number is the amount of discrete graphics card memory. That is what we're really interested in when it comes to stable diffusion. That's probably the most important number. Now, if we go back a few years ago, there were a bunch of GPUs known as the GTX GPUs. They're still around, but these ones are kind of falling out of favor for high-end uses like stable diffusion. They have a limited amount of memory and that limits their utility when it comes to producing graphics in machine learning. Now, there are three manufacturers to consider when it comes to discrete graphics card. And there is another company which you consider, which is Apple. Apple use what's known as unified memory. And unified memory in Apple today, the recently announced Mac Pro, can provide up to 192 gigabytes of unified memory. That's memory that is shared between the graphics and also the system. And it can be used by either. The ecosystem for Apple isn't so good when it comes to machine learning. So most of the recommendations will be either Intel, AMD or Nvidia. As we shall find out, the recommendations are all going to be Nvidia. There are advantages to going with NVIDIA. There are disadvantages. And the main disadvantage is cost. The first recommendation is going to be the RTX 3060. This is an old graphics card from several years ago. It is still available as new. And the ones that you're looking at on the screen here, they're currently at the lowest price that they've been ever and they've just dropped in that price fairly recently. I suppose that's because there have been some recent releases of new cards from both NVIDIA and AMD. Now, both NVIDIA and AMD said in May of this year that they were going to release several cards over the summer, and we've just started to see those releases. The RTX 3060 provides 12 gigabytes of RAM, and as such, it is a pretty decent offering in terms of memory. Now, the memory is important when it comes to resolution. With stable diffusion, the initial inputs were generally about 512 by 512 pixels. If you want to go beyond that, you need to consider more memory. That initial amount of 512, 512 pixels, it's very small. However, it's considered to be to, to process that you would need about eight gigabytes of memory as a minimum. When we look at the 12 gigabytes of the RTX 3060, we're looking at a reasonable offer. However, the power, the overall power of the RTX 3060 is not that impressive. It is beginning to show its age, unfortunately, and it doesn't have the same power as the more recent GPUs. The next GPU I'm going to recommend is the RTX 4060 Ti. This is the most recent release coming from NVIDIA. There is another version, which is the 4060 Ti, 16 gigabyte version. That's the one that is my key recommendation. It's fairly expensive at $500. It's not going to be out until July, but if you get a chance to get your hands on that one, that is the one that I would get. There aren't many excellent quality 
GPUs with 16 gigabytes of RAM at $500. The other cousin is the 4060 Ti, eight gigabyte version. That one is okay. It doesn't have a huge number of advantages over the previous 30 series, but it does run cooler and quieter. The eight gigabytes should be enough for entry level training. Now I've done two videos on graphics cards for stable diffusion by St Stability AI. And those two videos are going to recommend more or less the same GPUs. I've taken the opportunity with this particular video to express a desire that we have more competition that we maybe next year we'll have Apple competing against these other companies and maybe giving the Windows platform a run for its money. At the moment, we are really focusing just on Windows. That's where Staple Diffusion works at its best. 4060 Ti will give you the ability to work with models that are fairly small and not very demanding. The next recommendation is going to be the RTX 4070 12 gigabyte. This is the upgrade to the RTX 3070. It is a lot more powerful, about 20% more powerful than the 3070. On top of that, and importantly, it has 12 gigabytes of memory, GDDR6X memory. And that means it's particularly powerful. You can get this bad boy at around the same price that the RTX 3070 was at when the RTX 3070 launched. Consequently, I would say it's a decent upgrade at about approximately 20% extra performance for about the same price. Uh, a pretty decent card in this family is the RTX 4070 Aero Overclock 12 gigabytes. This one comes from Gigabyte and Gigabyte is a company I tend to like. Now, if you want to know more about the companies that are involved in graphics cards, in NVIDIA graphics cards. I did a video last year which covered the entire, almost the entire range of uh, brands that produce these cards. I'll link you to that video. I would strongly recommend watching that video if you're buying an NVIDIA GPU. There is another card here, which is the RTX 4070 from ASUS. This bad boy actually comes in at just $600. And I think part of the reason that ASUS at the moment are selling their products somewhat cheaper than they used to is maybe because of some really bad publicity that have got over the last few weeks. But like I say, if you want to know more about the individual brands, follow the video in the link. It will give you an idea of who you are dealing with. Now, the 4070 is a powerful GPU with 12 gigabytes of RAM. You can work with slightly higher resolutions. The most powerful GPU, both gaming and professional, is the RTX 4090. This guy comes with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. However, consider this is only three times more than the VRAM in the entry level 4060 Ti. This is an issue because you really want to increase the amount of memory to take into account increases in resolution. So for the time being, I'd recommend focusing on the single card that will give you the performance that you need. If it is the 4090, bear in mind that you will probably be purchasing the most powerful GPU that we're going to have for the next, maybe the next 12 months. So it's a good long-term investment. You might go for something like this Zotac, uh, try to get the five-year warranty. They've got an extended warranty, which requires registration. So this is something that I talk about in the video that I mentioned before. Now, this is a chart showing the price of the RTX 3070 in the United States. And as you can see, the price, that kind of fluctuation is insane. And it's something that we almost never see in consumer electronics. But because of the cryptocurrency mining craze, we saw extremely high prices for GPUs. For that reason, I'm going to recommend purchasing the most powerful GPU that you can comfortably afford and holding on to that for the long run in case you get some more of this nonsense. Now, if your system can run the RTX 4090, it can definitely also run the 4080. This is significantly less expensive, but it's also much less powerful at 16 gigabytes of uh, VRAM. There are certain things that you can do with the 4090 that you simply can't do with 16 gigabytes. And that's especially going to be the case if you're working with very, very large base models. Uh, if you're doing professional work, there are some GPUs like the 
uh, RTX A6000. There's a new one called uh, Ada Lovelace Generation. This one has 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 error correcting memory. So it's ideal for the kind of tasks where you need to get precision and it's it's best suited for working with a workstation but you can use it inside any any desktop that's capable of providing the the power that you need uh, there's an older generation the a6000 not the ada generation ada generation one but the previous one that one can go up to 96 gigabytes if you have two of those working in tandem that ability has disappeared with the latest one for some reason but these ones will be the ones you'd want to use if you have very very large data sets you want to work with base models you're not just uh, adapting a pre-existing model uh, and also finally we've got the grace hopper architecture which is going to be a computer that uh, nvidia is going to come up with later on that is for your data centers that's probably going to be tens of thousands of uh, dollars and we also have other lots of other gpus for the data centers the h100 a100 tens of thousands of dollars and apparently they need tens of thousands of those to work with uh, models like chat gpt guys that's going to be it i'll have links to some of these cards in the description. Hope you found that useful. I'll see you in the next video.